Senator Cantwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you uh, for this important hearing and to bringing up these points about sequestration because as a state that heavily depends on research with the, North, uh, the Pacific Northwest Lab in Richland, Washington and the University of Washington getting so much funding from NIH, we are definitely impacted and uh, just NIH alone, those jobs of research are about 8,000 jobs in the Puget Sound area to say nothing about the jobs at the lab. So, uh, I think a few years ago, uh, Chairman of Microsoft Bill Gates and the Cummings CEO uh, advocated for a very large increase in RPE as a way to say this is what we were missing as far as the opportunity to continue research there. And uh, I certainly appreciate everything that's been said about STEM today. And so I guess I have a, a couple of questions uh, uh, for you, Dr. Clawe, about uh, particularly, well, my understanding is there's something, and this was a few years ago, a need in the U.S. for something like 300,000 computer scientists in which we graduate something like 70,000 a year. So we're constantly falling behind and thereby the immigration issue becomes an active, an active debate. Um, and so part of it is making up, as you are saying, with the, 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 the uh, female uh, population. I once asked an uh, Asian engineer why there were so many uh, engineers, women engineers in China, and she said, well, because we have a national saying uh, that women hold up half the sky. And uh, she said, so we know that it's part of our responsibility. Here, I'm not sure we have the same uh, incentives, and certainly now, today, money is part of the issue. And so I guess uh, two questions I have for you. Uh, one, uh, do you think taking some of these resources of America competes and directly increasing the number of slots at our major engineering facilities as a way to catch up to that number that we need on an annual basis is, uh, is a good idea? And then the uh, second idea is uh, I just keep, as I go through my state, and we've met many people, there's a, a former NAACP chairman, Carl Mack, who has an organization that is just SEEK, Summer Experience uh, for Engineering for Kids, that's focused, on, again, on minority kids, that they're doing great things, getting younger kids more involved. When I went to high school, I ended up taking Latin and typing. Typing was the requirement. Latin was part of the language requirement. To me, the most important language today is computer programming language. Should we look at incentives at the federal level to encourage states to make something like C++ or Java as part of a one-year curriculum requirement for high schools or incent high schools to do that so more and more people are exposed, just as I was forced to take typing, uh, get people exposed to what really is going to be the language of the 21st century? I had to take home ec, okay. <laughs> which I was really bad at. Anytime I get near a sewing machine, it breaks. Computers, on the other hand. Um, so let me start by, by answering your first question, then I'll get to your, your second question. Uh, the answer is yes in both cases, but let me explain why. Every institution that I know of is overloaded by the number of students who want to study computer science right now. So just to give you an example at MUD, we're a tiny place, we have 800 students in total. We used to be graduating roughly 25 to 30 of our roughly 200 majors a year in computer science. Now we have 80 of the, of the 200 majors. And, and plus we have a huge overload from the other colleges who all want to take our CS courses. So just to give you a sense, the number of faculty in our computer science department is 10. The number of faculty in our engineering department, which used to graduate uh, 80 or 90 majors, is 19. I cannot, as president, take an engineer over here and say, <clears throat> hi, wouldn't you like to be a computer science faculty now? I, there's just no way, other than increasing the size of the college, which is politically the most difficult thing, it's worse than sequestration, it's worse than anything that you can imagine. Well, we have just decided to do that because I've got no way to deal with it. There is just no way to deal with it at all. So could we use help at, from federal and state levels in terms of addressing, uh, being able to fund additional positions? Absolutely, that would be huge. Um, and you know, I'm, 
we're a tiny place, but the issue is the same at UCSD, the whole UC system. It's University the same. of Washington. So. University of Washington. I mean, we're all seeing it. And we have, we basically can do one of two things. We can cut the number of slots so that we don't kill our faculty. And that's not meeting the needs of the nation. Or we can let our course sizes grow to 1,000 people in a classroom, which is not good either. So, you know, I, I think help from the federal government would be enormously appreciated. Now let me talk about um, efforts to provide more exposure to young people about how cool, and yes, Chairman Rockefeller, you're absolutely right. Computer science is incredibly fun and cool and creative, and anyone can do it. So right now there's an organization called code.org that is working really hard to provide uh, opportunities uh, at both elementary school, middle school, and high school for students to learn how to code. And I'll say you, tell you that my favorite co programming language is not C++ or Java, it's Python. Uh, now it's not because my son met his girlfriend at a Python meetup. It is because Python brings many things to the table that Java and C++ and other programming languages don't. One is it's much more forgiving. It's much easier to learn. It's something that certainly a fifth grader can learn, whereas C++ and Java you know, are not. Yeah. But two, it's actually used in industry. It's the favorite prototyping language of most software developers. They'll develop it first in Python, and then they'll take the parts that need to run fast, and they'll recode it in C++ or Java. And so it's actually something that once you've, once you've learned Python, you can get a summer job, which is really important to many of our young people, particularly people from low-income backgrounds. So there are efforts out there. Um, I think there are many initiatives. But the one thing that's not there in most places is a requirement to take some computer science, either in middle school or in high school, and we need it. Mm -hmm. So yes, that would be a wonderful thing to have happen at the state level, and any help from the federal government would be very, very welcome. Thank you.